Welcome to the all new adventures of the Doctor Who Book Club podcast. This is Matt in Minnesota. And this is Chris in South London. We're going to be trying to continue um, sort of in, in the spirit of, of Eric and Sean. I, I, I don't know whether I'm going to be Eric, whether I'm going to be Sean, or whether we, we, we'll kind of create our own unique flavours. But uh, but yes, uh, this is the, certainly this is the first time that I've done a podcast. And uh, yeah. I think, is it... Is it are you a um, a podcast newbie, Matt? I've guested on a few podcasts over the years, but uh, this is my first attempt at uh, having some sort of regular schedule. So I'm excited to give back. I listen to plenty of them, so yeah, it'd be nice to uh, nice to do that. Yes, yeah, no, it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be good. So we, we were having kind of a think before we started as to kind of like a, an opening sort of question and stuff just so that we can kind of uh, get to know each other really as much as anything else so what would you say be your favorite doctor slash era i'm going to probably go with a consensus on this one and i think from the classic era i would say the troughton era probably is in some respect very definitive in that it Hmm. uh without without troughton I don't think the show would be where it is today. I mean, Hartnell definitely created the character, but um, so much of what modern Doctor Who takes from the classic series, I think, comes from that era in particular. So I'll, I'll be safe and go with that one. <laughs> it's interesting you say that that's the consensus. I mean, I don't think you're wrong, um, but I just remember sort of, uh, when 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 I was kind of a sort of a teenage fan in the in the wilderness years, uh, that uh, it was yeah, it seemed to be the bloke with the scarf uh, was the general consensus, um, and uh, that that definitely has kind of evolved of, of, of the classic stuff. For me, I mean, there is the cop out answer, which is kind of the last Doctor I've watched slash read about, because I I do find it kind of I, I find it a bit challenging to kind of to rank them, but um, I, I think probably from the classic era, I would say actually from the classic era, I would say Sylvester McCoy in the books. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Interesting choice. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Sylv. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, and I think also sort of from the modern era, yeah, it would have to be Matt. Um, though I mean I I can I also really do kind of enjoy the Hinchcliffe era of uh, Tom, and uh, so yeah. Are you a uh, big Finnish guy at all? Have you listened to any of the? Uh, I know. He, yeah. I think uh, there was like a Philip Hinchcliffe uh, box set that came out. I've not listened to any of that. Um, but uh, I, I, I've kind of been sort of a bit sporadic on my my big finish. Uh, I, I did listen to their um, their 50th anniversary tale, and so I, I, I tend to kind of go for the for the biggies. And at some point soon, um, I think I'm going to invest in a kind of in a War Doctor box set. Um, oh yeah, uh, which, that would be a yes. Which, which, which might be a good segue. The, the delightful folks at home will probably be kind of wondering um, sort of what which book we might be wanting to start off with. Unfortunately, probably a little timely, um, given the news of John Hurt's passing, but I think uh, starting with Engines of War by George Mann would be a good book to kind of kick off the book club Mm -hmm. in that it is uh, kind of a a new classic doctor, and it it also uh, branches out a little bit from the format of the new adventures, missing adventures, eighth doctor, past doctor cycle that uh, the original uh, book club podcast was doing. So, uh, and it's it's kind of a shit. (laughs) (laughs) And it would continue to uh, those ranges as well but I, but I think branching out a little bit and doing there so there's so much new series content now um it'd be a shame not to uh read some of it especially considering that i kind of compulsively buy <laughs> all, all the Doctor <laughs> novels so i've got stacks of unread uh books here and it, it would be nice to uh kind of have some motivation to read some of them sounds good i mean 
uh, as I kind of alluded to with my answer regarding eras, um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I devoured the um, the new adventures and and missing adventures. I kind of drifted off a bit during the Eighth Doctor adventures. So, but that's just because things like kind of university and real life kind of got in the way. I've not read much of the new series adventures so it'll be interesting as I'm I'm looking forward to kind of discovering uh, new authors and uh, and also kind of catching up with um, with with old authors because I see that uh, Gary Russell is very much um, kind of producing work and also these days as well they have kind of sort of starry writers uh, like uh, Mr Baxter and Mr Moorcock oh what's his name Alistair Reynolds I think yes, yeah. yes, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so uh, I, I know there's the new series range, but um, I I don't know if there's a there's all these like little subset ranges within that range, and it's hmm. kind of a I don't know if you call them like deluxe books or <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> big name author books. But yeah, certainly I think reading some of those titles would be uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting, um, and certainly seeing how they kind of adapt. Because I remember um, reading, because there was a new adventure that was written by an at the time big name author who wasn't um, wasn't so heavily connected with kind of Doctor Who as far as I was aware at the time. And I remember reading it, kind of thinking, I'm not entirely sure where you get it. Um, that author was Russell T Davies. Um, so the original series has already done. Uh, oh no, I'm forgetting what the name of the book is. Damaged Goods. Um, so, which is an excellent book. Um, it's sort of very much late in the um, in the Seventh Doctor New Adventures run. But also, you've got the Doctor kind of swearing in Gallifreyan and uh, and and various other things. Where I'm like, yeah, it's it's not quite how the other books are. Even though the other books were quite broad, I mean, that was my own personal take at, at 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 the time. But I was kind of, but yeah, let's safe to say he he has he has got the spirit of the show. I yeah, my my teenage self was wrong, um, but uh, it'd be interesting to see how um, yeah how, how how Stephen Baxter and Michael Moorcock and the like cope because some of Stephen Baxter's stuff had originally been Doctor Who pictures. I think there's oh, a I... sequel he wrote to the Time Traveller. That I think was originally a Doctor Who pitch in some respect, um, but uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be good. It'll be good to see, and um, um, so I, I'm kind of looking forward to that. And we're also kind of thinking of maybe doing some of the graphic novels as well. Yeah, I think that expanding the remit a little bit and uh, getting some of those, especially the the comics that have been collected into graphic novels. Hmm. Both um, some of the newer stuff that IDW and Titan have put out, but then also what Doctor Who magazine and Panini have published in, ser- yeah. in terms of their uh, collections too. It will probably focus on uh, the the books, but but we would like to mix in graphic novels and into into that as well. So yeah, I think that would be a great way to to branch out a little bit more and uh, take in even more types of stories from uh, Doctor Who. Definitely, definitely. Um, have you ever sort of been in a book club before? Anytime. I was thinking about that. Um, <laughs> um, Stealth book clubs, excellent. <laughs> yeah, I think in uh, what in the United States we call middle school. So seventh, eighth grade, there was a there was a program called Junior Grade Books where uh, we we did extracurricular reading, I guess you'd say, in classes. But the, but as an adult, I uh, attended a, a couple of like one-off book clubs, but not not an ongoing one. So this would be a kind of a new experience for me in, in that. How about yourself? Um, yeah, kind of fairly similar. I mean, we yeah, sort of went through various books in in, in, in kind of English classes, um, but uh, I've I've not actually been a kind of part of a book club per se. But uh, yeah, it, it's 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 going to be an an interesting challenge. I mean, I do listen to a few book club podcasts as. You know, the, the the original incarnation of this show, and also um, uh, sort of sword and laser, I I, I could have listened to. So, uh, but sort of listening is 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 is, a, is not quite the same as doing oneself. But so it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, looking looking forward to the adventure. Um, yeah, one of the things we talked about a little bit too is uh, potentially rotating in additional uh, participants too. Mm. So uh, we want to keep that 
door open, I think. I, I've two or three people on Twitter so far that have reached out and have mentioned that they may, may want to uh, sit in on a, on a future book, and I think that'd be great to, to bring some additional uh, voices. I've also reached out to some of the guests um, guests from the previous uh, book club podcast, so it'll be, if any, if any of you are interested in uh, joining in as well, we'd most most book clubs that I've seen representations of, <laughs> it's like a small group of people yeah. in a circle discussing discussing a book sort of thing. So bringing getting those voices would be all for that. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I, I agree. I mean, it's the, I mean, I, the TV program and the franchise, I think, is 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 a kind of yeah. It is a fairly inclusive one, and so we want to have a kind of like an inclusive show, uh, and and have a kind of you know, a variety of, of of different voices. Uh, so yeah, that uh, the um, the more the merrier. We we also need to have a little think as to kind of what we're going to be doing for our kind of cycle once we've uh, finished uh, engines of 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 war. Um, but yeah, we 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 can have a muse on that as to um, what we go for for. Uh, our, our, our kind of our, our, our next one is uh, I do have a yeah my my, my 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 collection of new adventures is kind of somewhere um, actually you probably can't see it but um yeah, there, 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 well, actually you might there, there's there's a, there's a door with um, with much mustiness and 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 that's got that's got quite a few boxes of oh yeah, mine are on the uh, yeah. shelves here and then uh, there's some of the and the fantastic array of choose your own adventures, which is uh, uh, yeah, a complete yeah. set. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous, <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Um, have you seen the uh, the new uh, Capaldi choose your own adventures? The uh, no, there's oh wow, okay, right. Oh, and Jim that... Baxendale, a name I recognise. And uh, uh, Jonathan, uh, yeah, I don't know who. Okay, Night of the Crack. Yes, and uh, yeah. Terror Moon are the two. Okay. Okay. They're called uh, "Choose Your Future," right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And funny, be still, funny, lawyers. Be still. Yes. <laughs> so funny story about the. So yeah, I'm a kind of a choose your own adventure fan, um, and the Doctor Who has a little kind of unique history with that. So kind of as an mm. aside, there were I think six six uh books published in the in the mid 80s and then yeah. the 10th doctor and martha had 12 that were published and then the 11th doctor amy and rory had uh i think four stories that were published so i remember it, reading the um the six doctor ones is um or at least some of them because i seem to recall didn't some of them have some random choices of companions coming back from the past Oh yeah, like uh, K nine, yeah, yeah. I th- and uh, Pippin and Baker, I think r- wrote uh, wrote one of them too. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, uh, yes, I, I recoiled in horror. Um, yes, yeah, I, uh, uh, sorry, they, they they were they were not necessarily my favourite writing pair. I was also thinking one thing that we could do as well because there were because um, we had been thinking as well of kind of target novelizations and um, because there are some some of the target novelizations are obviously aimed at very small people and uh, but some of them are also kind of interesting kind of cultural artifacts and there's a uh, David Whitaker and um, is some because some of his stories were a little bit kind of broader than your typical William Hartnell. Um, in his his he, he he would sometimes go a little bit off piste, and in his book for the Crusades, I don't know how well known this is over uh, sort of you know, out, out, outside of um, these British Isles. He decided to rename uh, Susan's husband. Um, decided not, not, not yeah. David. Well, no, David. Yeah, David. He, or maybe he just forgot the surname. So oh. instead of having David Campbell, there is a reference to David Cameron. Who is Susan? <laughs> um, <laughs> nowadays, um, yeah, so you suddenly go, whoa, what? Because um, my and 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 my wife showed me a kind of a screen grab. And I'm like, That's not Susan. What's going on here? Uh, and yeah, as well as the kind of like the target sort of novelization, they were also when they were starting to run out of material, they were doing uh, novelizations of some of the Colin Baker missing um, season uh, twenty three. Uh, sort of scripts as well um though i have to say i do recall reading at least one of those and finding it um 
an interesting read uh, where uh, every I think every chapter was about three pages. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, and, and I, I think I, I was only about kind of ten at the time, and I remember thinking, "Oh, well, this is a bit shoddy." <laughs> so, but it, yeah, it would be interesting to kind of to to to, to you know to read those, um, and also there's there there is a. Um, a missing past doctor adventure. Uh, I, I choose my words carefully because um, there was Jim Mortimer had a book, um, I think it was Byzantium, um, that was rejected by the publishers, and he decided to go and publish it on the um, sort of in some shape or form. I think on the internet, anyhow, and um, that might be an interesting read. I, that is still I think there are. I think there are two of those. Ah, uh, okay. Is there is there one called Campaign? Oh. Yeah. It's yeah, I, I I have it on I have more shelves over that way. <laughs> okay, right. With more books on it's it's on there somewhere, but uh, I think the others yeah, there's that one and then um there's some other uh kind of tangential uh novels too, like the the companions of Doctor Who. Um Yes. The yeah. T- Turlo and the Earthlink Dilemma and uh, I think the Ian Martyr's book. And he wrote he, yeah, yes. and he wrote he wrote quite a few of Target novelizations, didn't he? He did. He did. He was also, I think, the first Doctor Who author to write a swear word in um, in a novel because um, I, I can't remember which word it is, but in the um, in, in in the Enemy of the World, um, that there is, I think, it, certainly by New Adventures standards, a very mild swear word because um, <laughs> yes, because uh, if if you are kind of new to the kind of the concept of reading the new adventures um and if you are a kind of um you know if if you are a younger member of our audience or if you know a younger member of our audience you maybe want to be very careful because the the new adventures yeah they 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 go to some interesting places with some interesting language there's no kind of um skirting around but uh, yeah um but yeah certainly we want to do um i have very fond memories of harry Solomon's war i uh, i remember um in the school in some kind of french writing thing um sort of writing that that was my favorite book uh, i was 11 and my opinions may have changed, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do remember it being a little bit nuts. So yeah, that 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 would be good fun to see, and also maybe some of the um, the Benny uh, Summerfield books as well, possibly. So uh, yeah, just just I, I think kind of see yeah see see how we go because I mean there are whilst those are very much on the tangent to the rest of um, of Doctor Who, though um, there are some. From my memory, some absolute crackers in there, as you've got kind of Lawrence Miles doing his Lawrence Miles thing, and uh, and just kind of going a bit bonkers. Though also now I do want because a lot of that features do feature the also people. Uh, or, oh yeah. Yes. Who, which at the time I thought was a brilliant, fantastic invention. And I've now read Ian M. Banks, um, and <laughs> but it is it's in the grand tradition of of kind of uh, of Doctor Who writers of kind of pilfering stuff from elsewhere and kind of putting a Doctor Who spin on things. So I, I, I kind of um, when I started reading the Culture Book, oh, this is where this came from. But uh, yeah, it, it, uh, I, I, I would recommend the the Benny books. I don't know how easy those are to find on kind of kindle or um, secondhand bookshops or the like um so um i think that's something we probably kind of need to be a spoke about we probably need to be a little bit kind of respectful for us because i'm not necessarily wanting people to be forking out um some of the silly sums of money uh that uh, you see the um you can see the new adventures books go for um but uh, i do have the benny books um okay Compulsion to. I, I think I have a complete set of every. Probably easier to say that I don't have the annuals and I don't have some of the uh, books that were aimed at strictly cool. at kids, like, <laughs> like the, the canine discovers. Oh yes. Those those sorts of books. But in terms of like novels, I, I think got a pretty good set. But yeah, you can make a really good point in terms of like uh, listenership and whether or not they're able to go out and get a copy of some of this stuff too. Mm. And and with the Benny books, I think. One one of the things that would probably help with that, if if we were to read a few of those, is to like you said, pick authors like Lawrence Miles or Kate Orman or 
Paul Cornell that um, you might have some crossover appeal with with the main yeah. ranges, and then some of the books too. I think feature um, aliens or monsters from from Doctor Who that are kind of in a, in a new environment. And one of the books I was thinking about reading for a uh, well, Peter Capaldi is still in the mm. in the role. Really want to read one of the books featuring him and so so far there have only been six that have been published and um the one that's if you don't count his uh, his choose your own adventures <laughs> but uh one of them uh is uh by gary russell and uh features the 12th doctor meeting benny so um hmm. she i think she func- she serves as you know in that comp- companion role in in that book that might be one to yeah to yeah, look at in, in the future that's very much a firm candidate and, and also, you know, because it, it will, might help introduce a new a new audience to Benny. Because um, I mean, I remember um, at, at at the time, I I kind of sort of slightly fell in love with Benny. Um, um, so sort of when she was a companion, and I found I, I was quite conscious of the fact that I was enjoying more reading about her than I was necessarily read about the the other members of the TARDIS crew. And so, well, particularly because I, I, I'm not convinced that a good job was made of Ace about when she came back. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, that that that's, that's almost spoiling my reactions to some of these. <laughs> some oh yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yes. To save that for the uh, yes. podcast episode. <laughs> yes, yeah, but uh, no, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good. Do you have uh, kind of? Probably best if we're kind of going into our memories of, of the books that um, um, that have already been covered on the podcast, so that we don't spoil. But I mean, do is there a kind of a book that you sort of have particular kind of fond memories of, or um, met from any yeah, of the ranges? Even though I've been collecting the books, I haven't read a whole lot of them. I, I'd hmm. say I've probably only read maybe fifteen percent, and that's maybe being generous. Um, the first one I've read was. Uh, of of any other ranges, I should back up a little. I got into Doctor Who with the '96 uh, TV movie, mm. so it's kind of a weird place to to start uh, in the middle of the wilderness years. So for me, the Eighth Doctor definitely was my Doctor, and then uh, following along with some of the books and the in the audios and, and um, the first Doctor Who book I ever read was uh, Evolution by John Peel, which was um, a missing or a missing adventure Fourth Doctor. Yeah. Sarah Jane story where he uh, meets up with Arthur Conan Doyle uh, and it kind of serves as the inspiration for the Hounds of the Baskervilles. Mm. Um, I, I don't think it was. Per- yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that it's you know <laughs> up, up there, <laughs> but, but it, it was. It was memorable enough that I uh, you know got more interested in in the ranges and, and started picking up the books. In terms of a favorite, gosh. I'd I'd, hmm, I'd have I'd have to I'd have to think about that one <laughs> for, for a while. I think um, I I have read quite a bit of the 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 missing adventures, especially um, from the Virgin range. Hmm. So it would probably be one of those, but I'd have to narrow it down a bit more. I think. Hmm. How about yourself? Do you have? Um, I I have very very fun memories of reading, and I'm, I'm kind of trying to restrict myself here to to books that I remember. Eric and Sean um, speaking about uh, Conundrum, uh, which is the Stephen Lyons book. That is that set in the land of fiction. Yes. That, yeah, yes. I, I have read that one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, that I thought was brilliant, uh, and also uh, Love and War as well. Um, yep. The um, um, the Paul Cornell uh, book, um, which um, yeah, which I remember at the time thinking was absolutely staggering, um, and sort of particularly the way of kind of both you know, introducing writing out a character but also kind of exploring Ace's backstory in a way that kind of sort of made made sense kind of tied into the main themes and things and and also because you know, I, I, I'd, I'd very much enjoyed Mr Cornell's previous efforts so um, yeah uh, and I, I can't say I've I've read all of his stuff so because um, I've not read his his um, his Benny book, which I think is, oh no, it isn't. Maybe. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I've I've, I've heard of I've heard the uh, big Finnish adaptation of that, but of okay. course it's that's very much very condensed and yeah. Um, I I did I do remember really enjoying the it was kind of a two part 
one that launched the Missing Adventure range, uh, Goth Opera and Blood Harvest. Yes. Um, I remember really enjoying those two and kind of how very similar to the Big Finish audio flip-flop where you can read the books in either order. They kind of dovetail uh, into each other, which is which was a lot of fun. And I also really liked the, uh, I don't think it was part of any particular range, but it was called Who Killed Kennedy? Mm. It was, I think it was written by, was it David Bishop? That I may be wrong there. I think you're um, right. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and maybe it's because the, there was a pseudonym, like a, the person who's listed on the cover is the character in the book. So maybe that's why I'm not remembering the Yeah. Doc. No, th- th- that, that, yeah, I I I I I was kind of thinking that that's another one that's probably worth doing. Though I remember it's it, that, <laughs> that that's very much for the hardcore fans, from my recollection. Just because yeah, like, a lot of, a lot of cameos. <laughs> yes, <laughs> by, by yes. former uh, characters on the show <laughs> and and interesting uh, uh, places. Some of them end up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think we we, 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 we best not say any more of that for kind of spoiling. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, because uh, I remember for many years there'd been much talk on uh, sort of that that people were saying, well, there's no really need to have like a two part Doctor Who book, um, and uh, you know, how could a story stretch across two books and kind of be coherent and stuff and I mean I'll leave it to the reader to decide as to whether or not interference is necessarily coherent um but uh, <laughs> I, I yeah I, I I just remember it just being you know a fantastic sort of you know, kind of mind-blowing journey um and uh, and and quite a lot of concepts that Lawrence Miles kind of threw in were were yeah yeah were, were incredible um I'm not going to go into too many details. I'm not going to go into any details, just in case anyone hasn't yeah, hasn't, hasn't read it. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I think if if you like the mythos being kind of tipped on its head, sort of interference definitely, and also uh, alien bodies um, um, as well. Uh, I I do I can't remember the specifics of alien bodies. Whether or not it's now been contradicted by the show, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was a similar premise. There was, I remember there being some uh, posts about that on online around the time that uh, Time of the Doctor aired in yes. terms of uh, yes. parallels. Skirting, yes, skirting around. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because yes, we don't want to accidentally ruin anybody's um, uh, reading pleasures. So, is there anything else um, that, that that we feel we kind of is? Uh, Hopefully we'll be kind of recording episode soon. Uh, I'm half, well, just about halfway through Empires of War, um, Engines of War, even. So I, 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 I shan't go into too much of my experience just yet because I, I, I don't want to kind of, um, you know, do anything. But, uh, but hopefully we'll be kind of in a position to, to do a, um, um, yeah, to, to kind of record that in the relatively near future, and, and then we'll kind of put that out into feeds and stuff. So is there anything else that you want to? No, I just want to thank everyone for uh, subscribing to mm-hmm. the podcast. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully continue on the, the tradition of the book club and uh, read a lot more Doctor Who novels and discuss them. And I think it'll be a great time. It'll be fun. Yep, yep. yep. And we, we might also continue the tradition that this podcast has had of sometimes being slightly late. So apologies in advance if we do the- <laughs> But uh, but we'll be carrying on in the very noble tradition of 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 of, of, of gentle tardiness in the nicest possible way. Um, but um, because it can sometimes be tricky, I think, to kind of fit in reading. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, sometimes reading in a book a month, as well as kind of doing other things. But uh, we will we will do our level best to uh, to ensure uh, that uh, yeah that, that 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 we are we are on time and things. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so I shall um, start kind of wrapping this up. Um, Sounds good. So this is Matt in Minnesota, and I want to say <laughs> thanks again for listening and happy reading. Mm-hmm. Happy reading indeed. This is Chris in South London. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the all new adventures of the Doctor Who Book Club podcast. You can contact the show and follow us on Twitter at ANDWBC Podcast. 
Our music is the Doctor Who theme, Swing Jazz Version, by George C. Music, used with attribution under Creative Commons license. Until next month, happy reading. Thank you.